forward to see them as well. And another update from Pastor Jim is that he is doing really well, and he is continuing to heal and feeling better by the day. So thank you for your prayers for that, and continue to keep him in your prayers as well. The journey meets at 4 o'clock today out on the patio. They have a wonderful time coming together with music and prayers and devotion. So please join them if you are able to for this contemporary worship service. Well, I can't believe I'm saying this, but the Christmas worship festival tickets for December 3rd and December 4th are now available at on the patio after the worship today. You can also get them online at lmpc.org. You can also call the church office to get them. But the suggested donation for that is $25. So if you would like to get them today outside on the patio or call the office or online, whatever works best for you. But please come out for this amazing and wonderful service time. And don't forget to pick up a shoebox at the children's ministry card today. That is for Operation Christmas Child. There are instructions in the box that tells you how to pack the boxes and what to get them. And we ask that you will bring back those packed shoe boxes to be returned by November 18th so that CM can take them and deliver them to a local collection site. I want to remind everyone, going with the Christmas theme, that the Hanging of the Greens will happen on Saturday, November 26th at 9 a.m. So mark your calendars for that and come and be part of this festive time of preparation and fellowship. And I have heard there will even be some refreshments. So I am sure that will be a good draw as it usually is. And finally, there's still spots available to sign up to give blood uh, for the uh, Red Cross. That's going to be here on Sunday, November 20th. You can call the office and or register online and schedule an appointment. The appointments that day is from 7.30 a.m. and it goes all the way up to 1.30 p.m. Well, now I'll ask you to stand as we do the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Please be seated and join with me in prayer. God of all grace, we have come here today not by our own power, but you have drawn us in your mercy and truth. You have sought us in every moment of our lives that we may be with you through eternity. Now let us enjoy a glimpse of that blessed day in which you will be glorified in all the worlds. Lord, we long to see your face smiling upon us in the face of our Savior Jesus Christ in whose name we offer all praise to the glory of your blessed name. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, church. It's so great to be with you again this morning. I invite you to stand as we sing of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are good, you are good when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love. Slay for all to see You are light, you are light When the darkness closes in You are hope, you are hope You have covered all my sin You are peace, you are peace When my fear is crippling You are true, you are true Even in my wandering You are joy, you are joy You're the reason that I sing You are life, you are life And you death has lost its sting No, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace. Light of the world forever reign. You are more, you are more than my words will ever say. You are Lord, you are Lord, our creation. 
nation will proclaim you are here, you are here in your presence I may hold. You are God, you are God of all else I'm letting go. No, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever reign. My heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. My heart will sing no other name. Jesus, Jesus, my heart will sing no other name, Jesus, Jesus. No, I'm running to your arms, I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your embrace, light of the world forever. the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in our wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is a failing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You lay down your life that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Brings our chaos back into order. Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of Glory, the King of Glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice. Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of Glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is a failing love. That you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me
The God who created us and knows our every weakness is also the God who redeems us. With confidence, let us confess the sins that separate us from God and from one another. Merciful God, we are a people conditioned to measure truth by proof and evidence, by the testimony of witnesses and the testing of our knowledge. In Jesus Christ, you gave us evidence of your supreme love for us, yet we still refuse to accept it. We ignore your still, small voice. We dismiss your action in our lives as coincidence. We take credit for our blessings rather than receiving them as being from your hand. Scripture is a faithful witness to your grace, yet we fail to avail ourselves of its wisdom. We demand signs of your presence, yet are so distracted by the pace of our lives that we never notice that you have indeed answered our prayer. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. Forgive our short attention spans, our insatiable desire for the new and glittery, and our disdain for the old and familiar. Grant us the grace to be still, to listen and to respond to the leading of your spirit. Hear us, Lord, as we respond with our silent prayers of confession. Amen. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Friends, hear the good news and believe. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Hallelujah and amen. I invite you to rise and let's sing together our praise of thanksgiving for God's mercy. Friends, we have been extended grace out of the goodness of God's love for us. So as a forgiven people, we invite you to share that grace with others in the passing of the joy and peace of Christ. The joy of Christ be with you, Michael.
Good morning. It's time for this morning's children's message. And this morning I'm here with our fuzzy friends again. And we're talking about hope. We were talking about things that we hope for. And Mr. Chihuahua said that he hopes that his favorite team wins the football game today. And Mr. Polar Bear hopes he doesn't fall ice skating today. And Mr. Lion hopes it doesn't rain, which I don't think it's going to rain, Mr. Lion, but he hopes it doesn't rain because he wants to play outside with his friends after church today. Well, when we hope for things like these, we know what we want to happen, but we also know there is a chance it won't happen the way that we had hoped. And some people, and you may have heard an adult say this, might call it wishful thinking. Well, boys and girls, when we put our hope in the Lord, we believe, and we believe everything that Jesus said. I want you to know that God is not God of wishful thinking. God is God of fulfilled promises. Let's sing our prayer song, and then we'll pray. God is always near me. God will always hear me when I pray. Bow your heads with me. Dear loving God, thank you for this day, thank you for your promises, and thank you for the gift of Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. So boys and girls, bye-bye for now. The first lesson today is Isaiah 12. Hear the word of the Lord. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for that you were anger with me. Your anger turned away, and you confronted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name, may the known his deeds among the nation, proclaim his exalted, sing praises to the Lord for his glorious days. Let this be known in all the earth, shout out loud and sing for royal Zion, for the great and the might is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Our second lesson today is from the book of Luke, chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. So hear the word of the Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, as for these things that you see 
The days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. And then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed, even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The word of the Lord. Let's pray. O oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for being with us in our midst. Thank you for dwelling within our hearts, mind, and souls, Lord. And we now pray, take over. May your word richly flow through me, Lord. And may ears be open, ears to our hearts, to hear your word and only your voice no other voices, and may it be so. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Some of you have already heard my story. I'm not going to bore you too much with letting it be a long, ongoing story, so I'm just going to put it together in a nutshell. My story took place when I took my confirmation classes many years ago as a young teenager in my home country, in my birth country. It was a totally different political system during that time. So the church was a state-owned church. The government was very involved in what could be said and what could not be said. But I did take my confirmation classes and that, those classes actually took a whole year for me to complete. During one of those events in, on a Sunday worship service, afterwards I went up to the church pastor, my confirmation pastor, and I told him, this is amazing. This is the word of the Lord and it's true. It's the living God. Jesus is real. This is real. This is just not a history book, I said, by holding the Bible that I had been given. And I thought, being naive and being very young, that he would be just as excited for what I felt that the Holy Spirit was just dwelling richly within me, would be as excited as me to hear this is just not a history book. This is real. And instead, he looked at me with very stern eyes, and he took me further back into this beautiful cathedral building, and he said, Annette, no. No, no, no. It's not true. This is not to believe. This is not to believe that it's a true story. That's not why you're here. I was confused. 
I didn't say anything. I just listened. And he said, Annette, this is not for people like you. This is only for those who are weak and who needs God. You don't need God. It's not true. And you need to leave the church. Being a teenager and living in a country that had socialism, you never questioned authority. You did what you were told to do unless you would get in trouble. I left the church that day, my hometown church, that had big cathedral ceilings and echoing and just beautiful around me, and I left it with the open doors in shame and confusion. I was so shame of it. It took me years to even tell the story. It actually took me decades to share that story. As I left that building, I never did go back to it, but I came to realize that, wait a minute, he told me not to come back to church. Apparently, I had taken the word of God too far. I actually believed in it. So I thought, I think I can worship God outside. The majestic mountains on the countryside where I lived, the beautiful flowing rivers around my town, the lakes, everywhere lakes, and the beautiful forests that were made out of birch trees. That's where I could go and worship God. And I didn't tell anyone that I did, because remember, I had been told in this political system to keep quiet about this foolishness that he called it. It took years for me to dare to go back to a church building. It was when I came to this country and as I came to this country, it was on the East Coast, I knocked on the door of this church, and I waited for them to open the door, and then I said, is it okay for me if I come in here? Am I welcome here? And that beautiful, wonderful female pastor, her name was Margaret Payne, I still remember her to this day, said, come on inside. What's going on, girl? Just come on inside. Well, see, the thing is that the building, I could still worship God. I didn't need that building, although I would have loved to be part of that church. It was good to be part of another church in another country, but I came to realize that the Holy Spirit cannot be contained inside walls or a building. The Holy Spirit is dwelling everywhere, within our hearts and our minds and our souls, absolutely everywhere. And I also realized that my story is not, I wasn't persecuted. People are worsely persecuted by being thrown into jail in other countries. That was not the way when I grew up. In my home country, you were just shamed and ridiculed. And you can live with that, right? Well, in today's text from Luke, the disciples were enamored by the beauty and splendor of a building. It was a physical container of spirit, the temple. They were so impressed by the adornments, telling Jesus how amazing it was that these gorgeous, precious stones were dedicated to God. But Jesus was not that impressed. Instead, his response to them was a prediction. As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. Jesus and his disciples were all looking at the same temple, but they were not seeing the same thing at all. The disciples saw a wondrous achievement of architectural splendor, surely an unbreakable symbol of God's presence, the place where he must dwell. The massive stones to them was a symbol of strength that could not be shaken, could not be broken. What an amazing house of worship with deep religious roots. Surely it would stand forever. But Jesus 
looking at the same structure, saw something entirely different. He saw destruction, loss, and grief. And he saw that in the heap of rubble and ashes as he would become one day. He saw beyond the glory, and he warned them of what was to become of it. Of course, we all know Jesus was right. The temple was destroyed, and it has yet to be rebuilt. This is because before there can be a new life and new hope, there must first be death. Only from ashes can there be a resurrection. There is no other way. And it's God's way, not ours way. And for us to have the promise of the resurrection through Jesus Christ, we come to know we must die to ourselves. The disciples asked Jesus not how this destruction would come, but they asked him, when? Could he give them signs to look for? And Jesus answered, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must first happen, but the end will not come right away. This passage from Luke is referred to as an apocalyptic text, meaning it's a secret that's revealed, no longer hidden. The writer Debbie Thomas describes apocalypse so well when she calls it an unveiling. She says, a disclosure of something secret and hidden. To experience an apocalypse is to experience fresh sight, honest disclosure, accurate revelation. It is to apprehend reality as we never apprehended it before. So Jesus tells his disciples, and he tells us too, to look past what we see here, beyond the structure of the temple, because God is alive and present everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Yes, he is inside of the building, but the walls of the building cannot contain him. No matter how stunning and impressive any human-built structure may be, it cannot contain God's full presence. He is here now with us too. Even now, he's everywhere. See, everything except God is temporary, fleeting. Life right here on this side of heaven is too. It's temporary. We can get so distracted and fixated on the latest and the shiniest things or by the loudest voices around us fighting for our attention. But whose voice do you choose to listen to? If you hear the voice of Jesus, he says, not one stone will last of this. All will be thrown down. It will all be thrown down. But don't worry. I am here with you. I know every single hair on your head. There are so many voices, so many leaders that are promising us that if we just follow them, the stones will not come down. But everything keeps falling, doesn't it? Foundations that we built our trust on have become shaky untrustworthy, or they have crumbled altogether. Many of us have lived to see buildings turn to rubble. Burn into our minds are the images of 9-11 when the towers came crashing down, not just destroying lives and buildings, but everything, the structure on what people have put their beliefs in. We see images of the war in Ukraine, homes and buildings destroyed by bombs to nothing but ashes, 
countless lives senselessly lost. The destruction is not just something ancient that used to take place, something we only read about happening long ago. People are suffering and struggling now, today. Yes, we can turn off the television screens when we don't want to watch any more of the wars going on, but it's still happening. And as the foundations crumble around us and the mountains of rubble and ash grow across the world, there is only one voice to listen to. There's only one voice to follow, to draw our eyes toward, and that's Jesus. See, there's so much more than what we can see here. When this is all done, there's the eternity where we go through Jesus Christ, with Jesus. So what do we do while we're still here? Do we just sit down and wait? No, we don't. There's a purpose and a meaning while we're here. Where do you see Jesus? Where do you see him? We are called to see him, to see him really, truly see him, to notice what he noticed, what really matters in life. So what did he see? He saw the poor widow who gave the two coins, all that she had. We need to see her too. We need to see the poor, the homeless, the hungry, and the abused. And when we see them, that's when we see Jesus. There's so many people and creatures, big and small, that God has given us the ability to care for while we're here. There are hurting, abandoned, helpless people everywhere around us. We need to see them. We need to see them, to care for them, because God has given us ears to hear his voice and hearts of unconditional love to reach out in them in Jesus' name. Jesus took our place on the cross, not because he had to, but because of his love for you. The past few weeks we have spoken about what is truth, Jesus is the truth. And the truth is that we are children of God, children of the resurrection. That's hope. And this hope cannot be contained to buildings or structures. It doesn't fall and, and crumble. It's here right now. And this hope shall last forever and evermore, always. And so it is. Amen. Friends, we are blessed to be the family of God, the body of Christ. So in response to a God who blesses us far beyond what we deserve, we offer our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. And as we leave here today, you can leave those in the baskets by the door. Now, please pray with me. Lord God, all we can say is thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, we just thank you for loving us before we loved you. Loved us so much that you took our place on the cross so that we can live forever. That doesn't end. So may you stir up within us, Lord, whatever it is between you and each person, Lord, what we want to give back to you so that your gospel, the good news, can be spread into the rest of the world so that all people can come to know how much you truly, truly love them. Lord, we love you, 
And we thank you for your presence here now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. say thanks for the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me, the voices of a million angels could not express. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to Thee. To God be the glory, to God be the glory, to God. Let me live my life, let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary with His blood. was beautiful. Thank you, Michael. Friends, this is a joyful feast of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is what Jesus said when he left, that while you wait for me to come back again, do this in remembrance of me. Share the bread and the wine together as you wait.
for me to come. So this is the Lord's table. There's no fence around this table. This is not my table. It's of the Lord Jesus Christ. So all are welcome. We just ask that you put your trust in the Lord, and as you come, come with humble hearts. Now let us pray together. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. We pray that the sharing of the bread that we break and the cup that we bless may be for us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of the faith and grow closer to Christ. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon, very soon, be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come now, Lord Jesus. Come now. Amen. On the night when our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. He gave it to them and said, this cup is my new covenant shared for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again, and he shall come again. So come. We have now asked that our elders and deacons will come forward, and you can come to either up front, you can go into the back corners, or also outside, outside. And if you come down the side places, the deacons and the elders first, then you go back to your seats using the center aisle. So come as you are.
Would you please pray with me? God of grace and compassion, you are the same whose spirit hovered over the waters at creation. You made a world that is breathtaking and life-giving. And we thank you for creating and shaping the moon and the stars, for creating so much beauty and variety, for revealing yourself through the beautiful hummingbirds and the power of a stormy sea. It is with gratitude we acknowledge you formed humanity in your image, breathing your spirit into us. Lord, you know us better than we know ourselves. Let your love flow through us unto others. Help us to feed the hungry, to shelter the homeless, support the sick, and give comfort to the lonely. Guide us to see others through the eyes of Jesus with love, honor, and humility. Wake us up, Lord, as we pray for your church to become the beacon of hope for this broken world with the true freedom, love, and compassion, and healing hope of Christ come to unify all. Let your spirit hover over our land, pour down your grace, compassion, and kindness on all. Lord, bring us together, heal and unify us for your glory. Be with all those in authority. Give them wisdom and discernment for the journey ahead. And pour down your peace and hope for the people of Ukraine. And Lord, may this war come to an end. And Lord, be with us here at LNPC. We continue to lift up Pastor Jim for ongoing healing and recovery from his surgery. And we pray for all those to give peace to those on hospice care, Lord. For Doris Black, for Sam Johnson, may you be with them, Lord, and wrap your arms around them and their families. And we pray for healing for those suffering from physical, emotional, and spiritual pain, those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, those struggling to return to a new normal life, and those who no longer feel safe, those who are lonely, those struggling to forgive, and those who are fearful and depressed. Lord God, you are the creator of healing and God of love. Send your Holy Spirit's compassion to your family here present and keep our hearts, our minds, and thoughts in Christ Jesus, your Son, our Savior, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. It is amazing how God cannot be contained to buildings. God is everywhere, and he is with you even now, even here, no matter what happens. Structures might be disappearing, countries might be disappearing, but God continues. There is so much more to come that you and I can't see here yet. So as you go forth today, go forth into the world in peace and dedicated to God's voice, let us hold fast to which is good. Do not repay evil for evil. Strengthen the faint and hearted. Support the weak and help those that are needy and the afflicted. And honor all people. Let us love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may God's blessings be upon us and remain with us always. And so it is. Amen.